Welcome to School Matters. Today we're going to talk to Hamilton High Principal, Mr. John Wilhelm, and one of the assistant principals, Ms. Jesse Weisbrot. So welcome to you both. Thank you, John. I know you've been here before, so welcome back. <laughs> it's you. good to be back. Right. Let's talk a little bit about a couple of initiatives you have going on at Hamilton High School. First, um, Mr. Wilhelm, let's talk about a simple conversation you had with a, a student from a neighboring um, school district. Right. Uh, you're referring to Brooke. Uh, she was a graduate of Lakota East High School. <clears throat> this happened over the summertime. We, we were uh, working out. Her, her father works out of the same area. We just sat down one day and started talking. She's currently at, uh, at Ohio University mm -hmm. and just about what she's doing, you know, where I'm at. And she mentioned that she had an opportunity to speak with some Hamilton High School graduates. Then she looked at me and said, Hamilton High School students really love their school. And naturally, I was proud as a high school oh, sure. principal. Um, but what I think what that means, Joni, is that, that the students appreciate the opportunities they have at Hamilton High School. They love their teachers. They love their staff. They love the building and the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, and it's a whole culture that you're trying to bring to Hamilton High School. Yes, we're, we're trying to, to build a culture. And it's an ongoing thing. Our, our students are really taking off with it. And part of what we're going to be speaking here today is the blue to you and mm -hmm. how that's impacting our culture as mm -hmm. well. Very good. And I know last <clears throat> year you had made a, co a comment, I think you spoke at Rotary over the summer about having so much, you know, again, we talk about the alphabet soup. You have the SLOs mm -hmm. and the park and the air and all that, you know, the educational jargon. And you just said, you know, you have too, too many masters, if you will, and you need to be focused on one thing. Right. So what we did over the summer is we looked at a parable, and it's, it's the hedgehog and the fox parable. And what that is is um, kind of a story about doing one thing really well. Mm -hmm. And even though the hedgehog is smaller and, and meek compared to the fox, what does it do well? It defends itself. It protects itself. And so looking at that one thing and taking that parable back to the high school, what do we need to be focused on? What is our one thing that we need to do very well? And for us, that our focus is increased rigor in the classroom and increased student expectations and student achievement. Mm -hmm. To do that this year, we're focusing on our writing initiative. Let's talk a little bit about that because that's something our new superintendent, Tony Orr, sort of um, felt pretty compassionate about that as well. So let's talk about the writing initiatives. Okay, the, the writing initiative is, is essentially writing across the curriculum mm -hmm. in each class. And so the expectations for our teachers are that they are using rich, purposeful writing assignments and they're doing it and they're embedding it into their curriculum so that every student, whether it's a math class, a science class, an art class, a physical education class, is receiving rich, thorough instruction in the writing process mm -hmm. and doing it on a daily basis. And Jesse, you see it working pretty well at the high school? Absolutely. I mean, it was already embedded in, in what uh, was going on in the I first think that's place. important to say. It is. It's, it's, it's sort of an extension of what's already been doing going on. Right, and it's just a way to really look at students um, reflecting on critical thinking and mm -hmm. applying and um, you know giving them that opportunity to think beyond and showcase that through their writing. That's good. And John, you mentioned the hedgehog. You have a, some traveling <laughs> trophies with some interesting names. Explain that. Well, the traveling trophies, and, and I'm going to give credit where it's due, uh, Cheryl Burke, the principal of Wilson Middle School, showed up at, at Hamilton High School with this huge, f squishable hedgehog. <laughs> and I saw that, and, and Jesse remarked. Stuffed animal. Yeah, stuffed picture. animal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't alive. Right. Jesse looked at me and she said, you have got to get one of those. And, mm -hmm. I, and I, I agreed. So we actually got two. And it's a symbol, and it's a, it's a trophy, so to speak. And our teachers nominate other teachers within the building, their colleagues, for staying focused on, on those writing assignments, staying focused on what's important at Hamilton High School. So every week we have nominations for the, the Hedgehog Award. The Hedgehogs are named Alexander and Hamilton. That's clever. Appropriately enough. Right. And, and they have their own Twitter account. They do have a Twitter they account. Have their oh, own Twitter account. There you go. HHS Hedgehogs are, you know, at the Twitter. So. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> And, and the teachers, again, it's, it's an opportunity for them to acknowledge the great work that their colleagues are doing mm -hmm. day in and day out. That sounds great. And I'm sure they're enjoying who gets a hedgehog this week. It, it's very interesting. I'm sure. <laughs> Tangible trophy that they can celebrate with their students. That's so right. It's great. Oh, that's, Kids that's, like it, too. They as do. I say, that's very clever, very mm -hmm. clever. Let's talk about one of the books you read was Good to Great by Jim Collins. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Okay. Is that part of the hedgehog? Well, and, and again, that's where... Um, 
Jim brought up that parable of the, of the hedgehog. And essentially what that is, is is really staying deliberate and focused on what is important. Mm -hmm. I think too often in the past we've, we've been pulled in so many different directions. And again, you get back to you can't serve two masters. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're trying to do is, is make sure that teachers understand um, where we think they should be. And, and they have that authority to stay focused mm -hmm. on those curricular um, decisions and the importance of curriculum in their classroom. And you have a lot of ways like to monitor to see if it's successful or where mm -hmm. you need to tweak. Right, and one of the other things that, that is embedded within our culture is the collaboration and the, and the collaborative uh, network that we have amongst teachers. Yeah. Important to that is our teacher-based teams. So every Tuesday, our teachers divvy themselves up and, and work on common assessments. By they subjects. work on lesson plans, mm -hmm. yes. So our, our English two teachers, our 10th grade math teachers will get together. And, and that way they can have that professional time with each other to make sure that every student in the building who is taking uh, college prep English 2 is receiving the same quality instruction, taking the same assignments, and doing the same assessments mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. So that, that's important to us as well. Um, we also have collaboration time set aside on Wednesday. Jesse leads a uh, kind of a, a new first and second year teacher, I'll call it an academy, a mentor mm -hmm. teacher time on Wednesdays, and you could probably speak about that, what that is doing with us. Mm -hmm. It's called New Teacher Talk. Erin Watkins is actually taking the lead this year. Mm -hmm. um, she's one of our science teachers. And uh, allow those you know, important conversations with new teachers, sometimes everything can be overwhelming, right. um, especially at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. But allow those conversations to transpire, whether it's how to turn in a cut slip or um, let's look at OTES mm -hmm. and find ways that you can grow looking at the rubric. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the initiatives that I had with a new teacher talk is to ask them to step outside of their content area, get into classrooms that, you know, the assistant principals and Mr. Wilhelm say, hey, this teacher is just knocking it out of the park with right. differentiation. Mm -hmm. you know, reflect on you know, what you're doing in your classroom and, and find ways that you can grow um, and apply that to your content area and you know, help with student achievement. The best, growth, the best growth opportunities that we have are oftentimes with each other. Right. And we have some outstanding teachers within our building and across the district. Mm -hmm. And our new teachers can learn from those teachers and grow and, and get better. It's all well, about those intentional conversations of sharing best practices. And we talk about, you know, <clears throat> peer, you know, student peer um, tutoring with, with the students and the teachers. Again, they learn a lot from each other, mm -hmm. which I think is, is, is very critical. Yes. I mean, you can say it, but it probably comes off better if a, if a coworker says it. They can understand a little bit better. Right. Anything that is, is teacher-led or teacher-initiated mm -hmm. initiated, uh, carries more weight at mm -hmm. times than, than anything that a, an administrator can say right. mm -hmm. right. because they're living in the classroom right. and, and they have that experience and are dealing with students and working with students uh, on a daily basis. And you, you mentioned that we have some very strong teachers at mm -hmm. Hamilton High School, which sort of goes into another new initiative, um, the Blue to You video. So talk a little bit about that. Well, I was, I was in a, a conversation, I was a part of a conversation last year, my first year as an administrator, mm -hmm. uh, with Matt Tudor, who's the Director of Student Services and a student uh, and their family. Mm -hmm. And within that conversation, he started talking and using the, t the statistics 97 and 3%. And what he alluded to was 97% of our students come in on a daily basis at Hamilton High School do you know, what they need to do and you know highlight themselves are involved in a lot of programs and they do what's right and three percent of our students sometimes <coughs> make some choices um, through their behaviors that restorable mm -hmm. restorable right. um, choices but make some choices that unfortunately sometimes have consequences that go along with mm -hmm. those and it happened to be my best thinking time in the middle of the night, about two o'clock in the morning. I actually shared my, I shared my notes with John a couple of weeks ago. And I said, you know what? I've, I've had the privilege of working at Hamilton High School for the past 16 years. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I share our message everywhere I go in, in conversations, but how can, how can we capture that moment? How can we capture those you know, teachable moments when, and our students and share the message out. Mm -hmm. We're a business of people. Mm -hmm. 
You know, what better way to market your product than showcase students and staff and their interactions and programs that we have going on at Hamilton High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't able to get it up off the ground last year. And mm -hmm. so at the beginning of this year, I said, you know what, I'm doing it. I, I really want to, to market our school. I want to showcase mm -hmm. you know, the passion and enthusiasm that we have every day here. So I knew just the guy to go to. Mm -hmm. So I called Mr. Neary and I said, Mike, you know, this is my idea, can, can you help? Mm -hmm. And the line that he looked back at me and he said, Jesse, we're gonna go big or go home. Uh -huh. and oh, that's great. We and he, and um, I know you guys are gonna talk with Sydney and right. Mike later on today, right. but they've taken this this small idea and just allowed it to, to grow. I know I looked at some statistics before I came here today and from the first tweet that I put out mm -hmm. about um, Blue to You with the first episode, that has reached over 1,800 people. Mm -hmm. I know with the first episode, we've had over 700 hits. Second, second episode that we just released, I believe last week, mm -hmm. is getting closer to 500 hits. Right. And it's gonna take off from here, I hope. Great, and you're right. There's, you, there's so many different venues to get your message out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's Blue to You is just a, another, another way to do it. And we have so many strong and impressive teachers and students, so it's a great way, I think, mm -hmm. to highlight them. So let's go ahead and watch the first episode of Blue to You video. We are building a better Hamilton. Watch us grow. We are Big, Big Blue. Blue. We are Hamilton Proud. This is our community. Listen to our story. We are bringing blue to you. Hamilton High School is home to an amazing collection of staff members. While our facilities are second to none, without the tireless efforts of our teachers, custodians, administrators, and clerical staff, Hamilton High School would not be the tremendous learning environment it has and will continue to be. Most of their work is behind the scenes and out of the limelight, and nowhere is this more evident than in room 306. Whether you have attended a Friday night football game at the Schwarm or visited the HHS website lately, chances are you have seen Mr. Neary's handiwork in action. I think it's important to offer as many programs and clubs and um, facilitate as many teams and events as possible just to make sure that everybody feels welcome, everybody feels engaged. I'm Harry Potter and I approve this message. Everything, everybody has something that they can call their own and really feel um, part of here at the high school. Over the years, what I've noticed most about Mr. Neary is his devotion to all of the tasks he takes on and to the people with whom he works. He makes you feel extremely comfortable. He's very outgoing, very nice, and works hard and gives you high expectations, which I really like. You know, I've always found it really important to do everything that I can to give back uh, to Hamilton High School since they gave me you know my uh, first shot at, at teaching. Not only does Mr. Neary try to build strong relationships with current students, he also maintains them long after they graduate from Hamilton High School. I would have to say that my favorite aspect of teaching is just the uh, relationships that you get to build with students. You know every day I've got a collection of kids that come in and uh, want to learn uh, want to grow, want to get better as individuals, and just getting the chance to work with them and have a small part in that process uh, definitely makes each and every single day worth it. The biggest thing that I remember from Mr. Neary's classroom when I had him for senior AP English is that at the end of the year he took the time to handwrite each one of us a personal letter and told us that no matter what happened as we were in college or, or beyond, if we ever needed anything, that he was there for us. But I know that I will forever carry on the words that Mr. Neary has taught me, and I know I'll come back and visit Mr. Neary because I know he's gonna influence a million kids just as he did me. He's always very committed to the people that he agrees to work with. With as many moving parts as there are at HHS, it takes everyone working together to make things run smoothly. My favorite part of working here at HHS is definitely the community that we have here in the building. Uh, I really had a great feeling about uh, the educational environment and climate here at Hamilton High and that's honestly never wavered uh, throughout my time here. Uh, everybody seems to have a unified mission or purpose and, and that's just to provide the best educational experience we can for our kids. 
In the spirit of being involved in taking on new challenges, four years ago Mr. Neary made the transition from teaching English to facilitating the Teacher Academy program and directing Blue TV here at HHS. He just makes you feel like you're a family and you just learn so much, you do so much, you're always on your feet, you're always working hard. He has just great expectations for everyone. Every day he gives us the real life experience of working in a new studio. Also, he gives us the freedom to be as creative as we want. So when the opportunity to take over the Teacher Academy program came up, uh, I definitely had some reservations, but at the same time, I saw it as an opportunity to uh, really put some of my educational philosophy in action. We just have a great relationship within the classroom. He builds great rapport with his students. Honestly, the Teacher Academy program gives me the best of both worlds uh, as far as teaching is concerned. All in all, Hamilton High School is home to many dedicated and hardworking teachers and students who are working together to build a better Hamilton. Whenever we work together as a community, the potential for amazing achievement is limitless. Thank you for watching this episode of Blue to You. Welcome back. Wow, what a great video, and our two stars are with us today. Sydney Higgins, a senior at Hamilton High, and Mr. Mike Neary, teacher of Teacher Academy and Media Journalism. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us, how, how did, I know Jesse, Miss Wise Road said, Mike, let's do this. So what, did you miss a meeting, or how'd they select you first? <laughs> well, you know, just with my work in media journalism, you know, we, uh, we're always looking for, you know, bigger and better ways to uh, represent Hamilton High School, you know, and, uh, you know, what better way to showcase some of the talent that we have in the building, uh, as well as, uh, you know, really highlight some of the community uh, aspects that we have. You know, Hamilton's a pretty uh, tight-knit school. You know, we've got a very diverse student body. We've got a very uh, dedicated staff. And, you know, when you look at all of these different components, you know, I just don't think that um, many people understand just how good of a job we do on a day-in, day-out basis. And so, um, you know, it's really just kind of up to us to control our own message and, and really kind of show uh, what we're all about because there's so many fantastic things going on there. Well, and I have to shout out because your media journalism class does the Blue TV announcements, the daily announcements. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a parent a couple weeks ago, and she says, I get on online every day on the website and check so I know what's going on because sometimes, you know, high school students are very good at saying, oh, we have practice or this or that. Mm -hmm. So she likes it so she knows what's going on yeah, at the high exactly. school. Yeah, so absolutely. they do a great job. Thank you. I so, appreciate that. So great job. So this is sort of a, an extension, if you will. Correct. Yes. So tell me, Sydney, how did you get involved? Um, well, this is my first year in media journalism, and I was kind of granted the role of making features, mm -hmm. and um, so I would make little things talking about the new True West at the high school, or mm -hmm. just like fun, exciting things, like I'm doing one for the musical coming up, and it's like kind of like a commercial trailer type thing, right. and so with that, um, Mr. Neary came up to me and was like, hey, I'm granting you like this project, mm -hmm. this is your project now, and this is what you're going to do for the year, and so kind of went from there. That'll be great on a portfolio, mm -hmm. using your portfolio. Tell us about the trip that you took to London last year. Um, there was uh, this group called Beginnings that came to uh, the high school just to talk about the, uh, the business and talking about performing for a living and they were like, we have these camps and um, one goes to New York City and one goes to London and my mom kind of looked at me and was like this is like too good to be true and so we I went and basically they taught us um, about life in the business and what it's like as a director and an actor and then they would give us like acting training and talk to us about that so so you're incorporating some of that in in the videos mm -hmm. yeah definitely and of course it's in your blood we have to recognize your dad <laughs> mr sean higgins he does his own commercials he does mm -hmm. commercials does his own mcs and of course mm -hmm. he works at pyramid hill so you get it naturally 
Yep, I guess. <laughs> so tell us about the scripts, because once you once you decide on a on a teacher or student, and we'll mm -hmm. show the on the the latest episode soon. Once you decide on that person, who decides what the script is, or who do you interview? That type of thing is that a joint effort? Um, well, basically, we. Um, shoot everything. Mm -hmm. We shoot all the footage first and all the interviews first and from um, all of that content we basically make the script from there and see what the high points are and what is the most important throughout the whole thing and then then we make the script and Neri taught me how to do that and how to word it correctly and what is that what are the high points supposed to be. So. Because I know the, the finished product is always great, but there's a lot of work to do yes. before you actually get to the finished mm -hmm. product. So a lot of time and energy. Yes, definitely. So are, what's your hope? I know, again, we've got two episodes. What are you hoping to do? How many um, in a year? Well, we've got, you know, a few of them that we're in different stages of production on right now. You know, we're currently shooting our, our latest staff video. Um, you know, did some of the interviews today and things like that. So we should be done um, well before Thanksgiving with regards to that video. And then we're just starting to do like pre-production items for our next uh, student production. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've also um, tried to come up with some new ideas as far as some smaller features that we can do just to try to get things out, you know, more rapidly because the Blue to You stuff does take such a long period of time and a lot of resources. You know, for a one period elective class, it does kind of uh, take a take a village, you know, for, for those videos. And so uh, really we're trying to just come up with a lot of different ways to get out as many as we can. So there's no set timetable, but you know, if we can get a couple out a month, you know, and finish the year strong with, you know, between 10 and 15, I think we'd be pretty happy with, with that amount. Now, are you behind the camera, Mike, or who, or is that another student from media journalism? Or um, Chloe so? Mills does a lot of our uh, camera work and a lot of our uh, production stuff. She does a fantastic job with the, uh, the camera work, and uh, there's a number of kids in the media journalism class that really have taken on a really strong role uh, with regards to our production, and so what I, you know, what I like about the class is I kind of show them how to do it the first time and then they take it and kind of run with it so when we did like for example Cindy mentioned that true west feature mm -hmm. uh, we spent um, and we took like practically half the class down to the cafeteria to shoot the feature showed how to set up show how to do all of the you know sound and audio checks and everything else like that and then um, once we edited it and got it done, you know, pushed it out, then it was kind of like, okay, now that you guys have done it, we'll take the training wheels off, you guys can do the next one. So now, you know, Sydney and Chloe are, you know, running with the musical and, you know, they had some great ideas as far as some of the shots they did and things that, you know, I was like, okay, sounds good, you know, and I, you know, they put, a, you know, uh, Chloe used a filter the other day, um, you know, in post-production that I didn't even think of and it turned out really great. So I just, I like to see those, you know, light bulb moments where they do these things and just kind of figure it out. And it's, it's just, you know, that's what the class is. It's just kind of like seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, and then highlighting those things. And the media journalism class, as you said, it's an elective, mm -hmm. but it's all, it's for sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Correct. So you'll constantly have, you know, people up and up and coming if you will yeah we know sydney's a senior mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yes. there'll be somebody in, in the wings yeah it'll it'll definitely be tough to lose sydney because and you know because she's such a fantastic part of the class and a big part mm -hmm. of the class um but you know we are we're always looking for new talent when and what's nice is we kind of get to self-promote in the sense that the kids see us every day mm -hmm. they know we exist they know it's a class and so it's kind of like oh i want to do that okay right. we'll, we'll sign up you know i get right. kids all the time coming in my room like i want to do blue tv i want to sign up okay well you know february comes around you know like when we do scheduling, uh, you know, fill out the application and we'll get you in the class if, if it fits. And, um, you know, so we're always uh, gaining new students. And, you know, there's a journalism class at the freshman building that, that helps feed into uh, what we're trying to do. And so this is only, you know, it's hard to believe, but it's only the third year for media journalism. And so, you know, it's it's been a, a learning process for us all and we kind of work out the kinks. and. And there's some and that probably gravitate to be on set mm -hmm. versus some that probably want to be like behind the camera mm -hmm, and you find sure. whatever niche that they have. Yeah, and we try to try to give them as much ownership as we can. You know, they they tell me what they would like to do and you know we try to make that work and then sometimes those things kind of shift you know we've had kids that started behind the scenes and then decided they wanted to try some stuff on camera and became some of our best on-air personalities mm -hmm. and and vice versa so it just kind of you know it's it's a year-long course so they get a chance to try everything out 
out and you know I'm usually of the opinion if they want to try something let's go ahead and try it and if mm -hmm. it doesn't work then we just don't show it and right. it's okay you right. know it's like um, that's the nice thing about you know the the digital era is like it's really easy to push that delete key if something doesn't work right. so um, we do that quite often you know with a lot of things that we do and we talked about the, the daily announcements being on the website, and, and these are too. I mean, social media has opened it up. Uh, Ms. Weisberg was talking about how many hits that we have. So mm -hmm. Twitter, um, Facebook, YouTube, it, I mean, the message is out there quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed. You remember the number I told you I wanted in the first weekend? I don't remember, but it was big. It was a lot. You know, <laughs> again, go big or go home. I was, right. I was shooting for 25,000, so we'll get oh. there, but it's going to take some time. Well, maybe it was who they the featured. I don't the, know. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was very nice though because um, you know you you've been around a while and mm -hmm. I, what I really enjoyed on the videos, both videos, is is the people that you had that interviewed that talked about the people and it was a mm -hmm. variety of people. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that brings the richness into the mm -hmm. video as well. So mm -hmm. great job and looking Thank forward you. to seeing some more. Again, they'll Thanks. be on the website, YouTube, and. Twitter and all those kind of social media. So why don't we go ahead and finish the segment and we'll watch the, the second episode of Blue To You video. And we'll see you next time on School Matters. We are building a better Hamilton. Watch us grow. We are Big, Big Blue. Blue. We are Hamilton Proud. This is our community. Listen to our story. We are bringing blue to you. The experiences we share and the relationships we forge at HHS remain with us long after receiving our diplomas at graduation. The bonds we make with our teachers and peers are vital for our growth as individuals and oftentimes form the cornerstone for future success. The bonds we make here at HHS are strong and nowhere is that statement more evident than with Alberto and John Zapata since their bond was sealed long before their arrival at HHS. We've been going to school here in Hamilton our whole lives. So um, we went to Harrison Elementary. We we're the last class, the last graduating class in that school. Well, we, um, we chose the engineering program. We chose it because we've always wanted to be Yeah, engineers. we've always wanted to be engineers. I think well, it was like, what, fifth grade? Fifth well, grade. Elementary, elementary like school, that, yeah. we, was, we always wanted to be like architects. We liked drawing buildings and stuff like that. Uh, the Zapata brothers come in here each and every day and they work great together as a team and I think probably part of their football background and the sports has really helped them there. They really understand the uh, value of collaboratively working together. Most of the times we always do something like as a team or as a group. Uh, sometimes you do individual stuff but like when it comes to like building stuff you you can't build something by yourself Big projects yeah. the the awareness of others was just uh, off the charts with those two um, it's a very prideful moment you know to, to, to coach young men like this that you know their goal is maybe not to go to play division one football but to be selfless people and go to the military and, and, and that kind of thing just that's just who they are you know just just phenomenal young men I don't know I guess being able to to bond with your classmates and your teammates I think that's a big thing and they're quick to help their fellow students and um, that means a lot at this age. That you're we, we work pretty pretty hard in this class. We don't we're just we're constantly like, doing something. Yeah, we're always. constantly doing something. There's and never like, a day that we always doing different projects. We're like, making an uh, arcade uh what's it called? Arcade tabletop. Yeah. We're looking at an arcade tabletop. Our, every student makes their own yeah. building. And the Zapata brothers, along with a couple other students, have agreed to work on designing and building some prototypes. Not only do the Zapata twins work on a variety of rigorous projects through their involvement in engineering, but they are also founding members of the LAB program. LAB, or Leadership Academy at Blue, is a program that started um, when this particular senior class were freshmen. And it's it was, they chose, I guess, 10 people who are like really stood out as leaders or since we've known them in the lab they've uh, um, just grown in leadership every time there's a, a any chance to speak publicly with uh, with a group they're they're always the first ones to say will we will lead we will talk to to people which is um, something that a lot of high school kids don't do um, impacted us a lot like we um, they teach us a lot of things about leadership how to be a leader things to improve your way of we, now what we started doing is going to the middle schools middle school. and I guess picking those leaders from near that will be coming up and become leaders themselves when it comes to the freshman building in high school. Success in school and in life is not found overnight. 
Throughout their time in the Hamilton City School District, the Zapata Twins have encountered some very powerful influences that have helped pave the way for their future successes. I would say, I guess a lot of people don't really know about what Hamilton's about, but really if you came here, Hamilton has a great community. Uh, we have a great school program, great teachers. Miss, we have Miss Burke, she's a principal at Wilson. She gets um, on us a lot about our grades, make sure that we're on track on our grades and stuff, make sure that we're applying to colleges that we need to. Um, say Mr. Marcello, he was my history teacher. His class was a lot different than any other class I've ever had in my life because he set high expectations for each and every student. Well, um, our relationship with uh, Mr. Smith, the really engineering cool. teacher here, we've known him since sophomore, sophomore year. He He's one of the best teachers I've ever had, actually. He's taught me a lot. He he cares about each and every student. There, there are two great young men that I think are going to do very well in whatever field that they choose to go into after high school. Uh, it's paved the way for like our future. Not only do the twins excel in the classroom, they are leaders on the football team as well. Lessons they take from the field have translated into significant gains in their leadership skills, coursework, and dedication to self-improvement. Like when you play in a, uh, for, for a team at school or something like for football, for instance, um, you make a, a real strong bond with people on the team and they're, it's like, they're pretty much become like your family. We love it, we care about, all care about each other. You know, here every day and giving you all they got, you know, every single day. We respect each and every one of us. We play for each other, so we make sure that everybody's working hard. If one's not working hard, we make sure we get on that person because we want them to strive. And if we know you can do better, we will push you to do better. It's usually on Fridays in the off season, we have kind of like challenges in the weight room where um, it's more of a mental thing than, than, than an actual physical thing, but obviously there's some physical traits that, that, that go into them as well. But um, one of the two of these guys were winning it every Friday, you know, uh, pound for pound, probably one of the strongest kids, you know, both of them, probably the strongest kids we got pound for pound. Any goal that you set, you could achieve if you put the work into it, if you have a good attitude about things, good mindset about things, you can achieve anything you want. And Getting to know them and watching them grow, they both work multiple jobs, they both play multiple sports. Being able to do all those things and at the same time have social lives and at the same time keep their grades and at the same time take higher level classes at Hamilton High is um, something that I, I'm in all of. But we saw their potential as freshmen and we are so proud of the seniors that they have become. And these two guys, they are Hamilton's future. I don't know, I feel like there's no other place I would rather like grow up in or or go to school at. I just I just love the big blue and